Hello, welcome to another edition of Learn to Use R with Dr. Waldrop and Intro to Exploratory Data Analysis, CDPSC 292. So today, this is the topics that we're going to cover. Um, these are the topics that we're going to cover. Uh, we're talking to talk about types of data in R because it turns out there's a lot of different types of data in R and it's uh, pretty important to understand what those types of data are because uh, you'll try to do things and it won't work and you won't quite understand why unless you understand data classes. So here we are I'm going to start with data classes in R. So I want you to all open your R studio, here it is, uh, and try this. This is a new way to assign a variable. Remember that we previously had assigned variables using um, the arrow and also the equal sign, right? Both of those are ways to assign variables. This is a new way to assign a variable. You can use the uh, function assign and it takes as arguments your variable. So what you want your variable to be up here, A, a uh, and the value, so the number two. Um, so this is what I want you to do is try it, is assign y to eight. So assign y and eight and you get an error. Why, what is up with that? Object why not found, what does this mean? Um, okay, so this is getting at the heart of what the lecture is today to talk about different data types. So this is how you fix it. Um, you assign and you just put the Y in these quote marks. Okay, so if you put the Y in the quote marks, all of a sudden, there it is, Y is eight. Uh, so um, what does this mean? So how is Y different from Y in double quotes, different from Y without double quotes? Well, we can try to look at the help um, using question mark assign. Okay, and let's see what it says about question mark assign, shall we? Can I pop this out? Here we go, I can pop this out. And it says usage X. Okay, we did that, the value, we did that. What's wrong with it? X variable name given as a character string. Okay, so what's a character string and why does it matter? Well, it turns out when you put this in quotes, when you put uh, characters in quotes, like double quotes like this, R assigns it as a special type of data called a character. Um, if you don't do this, it's treating it like an object that may have been assigned here. So uh, when you get an error, it's looking for Y in here, right? So if we restart R and get rid of all of this stuff, um, if you do assign Y, it's looking for the object Y, so it can assign the value eight to it, except Y is not over here, it's empty, right? But then when you put double quotes around it, what you're saying is, hey, this Y is a character, and I would like you to use it to assign it to eight, eight to it, okay? So there it works there. So um, this issue of data class is really important. So data types are really important in R because you can do different things, different types of functions worth with different types of data. And obviously you want different types of data because you want to be able to write out character strings like dog or cat and not have it be looking in your global environment for what does dog equal, you know? So let's talk about data types in R. So there are many types of data in R, okay? And one, uh, some data except different types of operation. Um, some functions uh, are have different types of operations. You can use different data types with different functions, but you can't use some with other data type and functions, okay? So they have different meanings. Um, the one is a character, one is numeric, or one, one L is, uh, or one can also be logical or true. Um, and all have different properties, okay? And all can accept different types of operations on them. And so that's why it's interest, it's important to just be aware of these things in R so that you can make whatever function happy that you need to make, whether it's a character one, a numeric one, or a logical one. Okay, so without different data types, R can't distinguish Y that carries the numeric value eight from the letter Y, right? And sometimes it's important to have both of those things as being pretty separate. So that's really good. Uh, so what can we do? Um, 
For an example, our assign needs the first argument to be a character, so it knows that it can create an object with that name. The second argument can be anything. You can assign it a different character value, it's fine. But the first argument has to be a character, um, which is why this works. Okay, so I was looking for the object Y and not finding it. Y is a character, so it knows how to use Y, and create an object, assign it, the value eight. Okay, so how do we distinguish these things? One way to distinguish data types, not the only way, but one way um, is to define data classes. And so a class is a way of distinguishing different data types. Um, in R, there are five atomic or like base classes of uh, data to objects. So they're a primitive or um, uh, atomic classes of objects, and they are numeric, integer, complex, logical, and character. Uh, there are other really specialized classes, though, too, including a factor that we'll talk about, matrix, a data frame, and a list. Um, you can actually create your own data classes and object-oriented object, object -oriented programming in R2. We're not going to cover it in this class because it's a bit too much um, for an intro class, but uh, you can also create your own specialized classes as well. So it's a really useful way of telling R, okay, this is a type of data, this is what you can do with it, and this is the features that it's going to have all the time. Um, you can check the class always using the class function. You just put your object inside that class function and it will return the class. So if we do uh, create a Y now as a sequence of one to eight. Okay, so now Y is this one to sequence eight. We can check the class uh, and it is an integer. Of course, integer um, meaning, you know, uh, full whole numbers, right? Uh, as opposed to numeric, which can be partial numbers or irrational and rational and uh, fractions and decimals and all of that stuff. Okie dokie. So check your understanding. Write out an example really fast of the five atomic data classes. If you can't do it quite yet, take a peek in the book, put it on pause, or just uh, come back to it in a little bit. Okay, let's talk about each data class now, numerical data. This is really important for R because R is really good with numbers, right? Numerical data types are those that deal with number values. And these can be numeric. It's also known as double. Uh, you'll see it sometimes pop up as a double. Uh, and that is uh, a throwback from C and C++ where it was double precision floating point numbers. But here we can just call it numeric because that's kind of what it is. It's positive or negative real numbers. Um, so examples are 1 over 3, 4.0, the, the number pi, 5.9, 16 over 7. These are all numeric quantities. The test, you can test whether or not a value is numeric with is.numeric, okay? So if you say is.numeric on y, you will get true because this is, even if it's an integer, it's also numeric, okay? So there's a lot of overlap between integers and numerics. Um, so for 2.1, it's true. Uh, integer can be positive or real whole numbers. Um, so 1, 1103, those are all integers, right? Uh, and the test is, is integer. So you can also do is integer And that's also true, okay? So if you do is numeric with something like 2L, uh, oh, that's odd, um, is <laughs> integer with 2.1, you're gonna get a false, right? Because 2.1 is not a whole number, it's not an integer, right? Um, oops, here we go. So 2.1 is false, but 2L is true. Complex, so complex numbers you may not have talked about in math, or maybe you talked about it a little bit in math, but they're imaginary numbers, those that have I or the square root of negative one, which is like not a real number, right? But it's imaginary. Um, R can handle these. They're not a very common da data class, of course, because mostly we're gonna deal with real numbers and in integers and numerics. Um, but examples of this are one plus I, two plus three times I, four times I, things like this. These are imaginary numbers and R has a special data class all for them. Um, you can test this with is.complex, and it's just testing, again, whether that i is there, the square root of negative one. Okay, there we go. Uh, just as a, a note, uh, be careful about this i using it. Um, sometimes it will, if you're using it as a value itself, sometimes the computer 
sometimes R will pretend that it's negative one and then that mucks up your whole thing. So just like heads up on that. Uh, best practice is don't use I. I will use I though, because it's a force of habit. Anyway, moving on, logical data. So remember how we talked about computers acting on binary, um, essentially all at the base of computer hardware is uh, interacts in binary. Um, so logical is kind of the binary class of data. It's based on this on off binary. It has conditional value, true or false. Okay, so examples are one, which is true, true, zero and false. Okay. Um, it's really useful for telling whether or not a condition is satisfied. And we'll get a lot of this into conditional statements, if then statements, if else st statements like this. That's a little bit further uh, in unit three. We don't have to worry about it right now, but just know that sometimes you'll want to do something and uh, you want to just tell is this value greater than three? Is this value, this is this string the same as this one? And this is really good. It, a lot of these functions will return. Uh, um, logical numbers for you. Okay, so uh, a good thing here is a is a, here's a conditional, right? Um, it's a, a greater than is two greater than negative three. That is true, right? Good. But you can write things that are not true too. Is negative one less than negative ten? No, that's not. So it'll return false, right? So that's really good. Output of many testing functions like is dot numeric is a logical. The output of that is a logical, right? Because you want to know whether it's true or false. Logical, true or false. So is numeric 2.1 is true, is integer 2.1 is false. Um, you can assign these uh, by using true in all caps or false in all caps, the capital T or capital F. Those all mean either true or false and will return and assign a logical to you. Okay, so you can assign true in capital T or but don't do lowercase true or capital T and everything else lowercase because it will won't it won't recognize that as being the logical true. OK, so it has to be this all uppercase and that kind of hangs people up a little bit because, you know, it was like, well, what what's this? What's the difference between true if it's uppercase and true? If it's like, well, to our it's a big difference. So just go ahead and make sure because this was not successfully assigned, right? Like this worked, that worked, this did not. <laughs> it's looking for the object true instead of uh, assigning it the value, the logical value true. Um, okay, so for relational operators, like we've already seen, we can use this to compare values and it returns a logical. So here are the logical operators in R equal to, you'll notice that this is two equal signs instead of just one, because remember, if we use just one, we're actually assigning a value, so that's not going to be useful. Um, but two side by side, uh, you can't put a space here, they need to be side by side like that, and that'll uh, that will test whether or not um, the two values on either side are equal to each other. Um, not equal to is an exclamation point and an equal sign. And so that means not true. Uh, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Okay, so that's pretty uh, pretty good. And again, don't put spaces in between these because I will not uh, read that. And I'll be like, well, I don't know what you mean. Unexpected character or error. Uh, so um, interestingly enough, uh, relation or op or relational operators are vectorized okay so if we have if we write quickly out um, a vector foo which is a popular vector um, for computer science um, by 0. Point equals 0. 0.5 okay so there's foo and then we can test foo is greater which parts of true uh, foo this uh, this numeric from here, which of those elements uh, are greater than two or less than two, okay? And so this is what you get. The first, second, and third are gonna be greater than two, uh, or sorry, less than two. Um, is that correct? Greater than two. Who's greater than two? Oh, yes, okay. One, two, and three are not greater, so they're false, right? <laughs> so that means they're less than two. Um, so that is one, 1 1.5, and two are all less than two. Uh, and then the rest of them are true, which is 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, and five. Okay, so uh, it operates this uh, operator on each individual element of the vector foo, all right? 
So that's really interesting. It's called a vectorized calculation, um, a vectorized uh, relational operators. And it's really, really powerful if you want to do a huge number of things, like you have this vector that's 100,000 um, positions long, elements long. You can do it in one simple line of code uh, because all of this is vectorized. OK, logical data. Logical operators are also used to compare logical values and return a logical. So um, this is going back to those calculation circuits that we talked about and how computers work. There's an and. So there's two conditions, and they have to both be true. And so one is true and true will return true. OK, so if you do true and true, you will return true. OK, if you do true and false, you return false, right? Because both of those conditions have to be true in order to get through the ampersand, which is true. OK, so this is element wise. Again, that vectorized calculation. If you want to do a single comparison, um, you can do a double ampersand. Uh, or is the pipe. So the pipe is the, the uh, a thing on your keyboard that is right above return and you have to hit shift and then do a pipe and that means or. So true or false will return true, right? False or false is going to return false, but false or true is going to return true because it's either this one or that one needs to be true to get through the circuit as true, right? Good. And then not uh, is just that exclamation point again. So some single operators are vectorized and we'll do element-wise comparison. Double operators will only do one comparison, the first position of vectors. So if you accidentally do foo um, with a, a, an operator, a double operator, what it's gonna do is it's only gonna do that comparison on the first value of this long vector, regardless of how long it is, okay? So sometimes that's kind of useful or you're testing individual elements of it and it's kind of useful to do that. Logical data can also be numeric. There's a lot of overlap. Are sort of sloppy about how it handles class data, and that's a pretty good benefit for you as the sort of beginner programmer. And why that is is because you don't have to be super super retentive about what your class is doing. Okay, as long as it's kind of like maybe numeric, um, R, R will definitely treat it as a numeric variable. Uh, um, numeric value. So that's true with logical too. They can be ones or zeros. So sometimes R is usually fine. I'll just make it a one or a zero and then do the calculation as if it were the value one or the value zero, um, which again is pretty useless. So if we do this, uh, uh, do this same sequence, um, what this foo is also um, here, it's also saying uh, zero false, zero, false, true, one, 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 one. Okay, so that's understandable. But if you sum this, you're gonna get six. And why do you get six? You get six because one, two, three, four, five, six of these positions are true. And so if you're doing um, this, whole, uh, uh, this whole vector, what ends up being, it, it ends up being zero plus zero plus zero plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one. Okay, so it's taking this logical uh, logical class vector and it's just saying, eh, I'm just gonna go ahead and convert it into integers. I'm just gonna go ahead and perform some on it. So that's good because you don't have to do an extra conversion, which is kind of nice. Um, logicals make sorting and replacement super easy. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about sorting and replacement, but it's it's like deeply, deeply easy and simple to do this because any entering logicals in square brackets uh, will pull a value from any position that is true. So if you have any vec, let's set this up, any vec, any vec, any vector. And let's say we have a vector C, 10, 12, 30, 45 and 60. Okay, so now I have my any vec in there. It's this numeric vector of like, what is that, six positions? Yeah. So if I want to say, okay, I have this any vec and I only want to pull certain, certain parts of this vector out, I'm going to use square brackets, which is for indexing or uh, subsetting. Okay, and I want to pull the first one, but not the second one the third one, but not the fourth one, and the fifth one, but not the sixth one. And what you get is the thir first, third, and fifth. 
okay, 321. And it's pulling out whatever's true, 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 and ignoring everybody who's false, which is pretty cool. Um, this is also true uh, with our foo. So you can redefine foo, um, referencing itself to anything that's above two in foo. So let's do foo. Okay, so we're gonna pull out anything that is above two. And you get foo here, okay? So that's pretty cool too. I, I really enjoy, you can do some really elegant things with uh, doing logicals, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can also replace true vectors with zero. This might come in really huge, hugely and handy later for you if you're trying to automate some stuff. Let's say you have your anyvec, you have this thing, but uh, you wanna replace those values that are true with zero. And so what you do is you can say anyvec, okay? Do that same thing, true, false, true, false, true false okay they have to be the same dis they have to be the same length and then just say i want to assign a zero to it wherever it is true in this any back and what you end up with is 0 10 0 30 0 60 okay just like it pulled out the true positions here here it's just reassigning those positions at zero Okay, you can also replace false ones with zero too by just using the only thing that's different between here and here is this negative sign. And if you do a negative sign, it's like, it's, it says instead of the true values, we now wanna replace the false values with this zero. Okay, so we can go up to any vec, use our square brackets, negative C, put that same thing in and to zero. And now when we look at any vec, it's just zeros. Because remember, any vec is now we made it into 0, 10, 0, 30, 0, 60. And now we're coming back to the false ones, which were 10, 30, and 60, and also replacing those zeros. Now we have a bunch of zeros, right? Sounds good. Okay, check your understanding. Will the following line of code work without an error? Go ahead and pause and try it. What do you think? Correct answer is yes. Why? Write about why this is true. So you know, you can just put it into R and find that it's true, but why? I wonder, I'm really interested in hearing about why you think that that is true. Because you're giving this logical to something that takes a numeric. So why is that true? Okay, let's move on to character data. Characters or strings are written alphanumeric text. So they're treated as text instead of any other meaning that they might have in terms of being the name of objects or being having actual numerical values. If we treat them as text, they're just text values, okay? So example is like this date, uh, one, Steve, haters, right? Uh, these are all just text. They don't have any other meaning. This one doesn't have another meaning. It's just a character, okay? Uh, character strings can be used to record dates, names, file locations, all sorts of really interesting things, you know, like things you want to turn into factors later. Uh, it's, it's really useful to have some of this text uh, available. Character strings are indicated by the double quote. So you have to use double quotes to get that character uh, to indicate to R that anything in between those double quotes want that to be a character. So please don't treat it like anything else. Um, here's this blop. Uh, blop is a string. Okay, blop. This is a string. And you can really put almost anything, almost any character into that string as well. And blop, the output you'll notice is just one string. Uh, and it indicates that back to you as using those double quotes. R treats strings as a single object. So if you want to do the length of blop, so how many positions the vector blob has, you'll just see one. All of this is a, uh, a string, OK? It's not separate letters is really important. Remember that character strings are not numeric, OK? So if you want to do something like my number, oops, let me spell it correctly, my number, and you want to assign it 35.4, but it's a character, do you think that you can multiply that by 2 times 2? No, you get an error because you're saying and, and R is trying to tell you non-numeric argument and binary operator. Like it's trying to say, hey, silly person, um, 
this isn't a number and I don't know what you want me to do with that, <laughs> okay? Because this is a string. Even though you can uh, know it's a number, it's actually a string here. A lot of relational operators will actually still work and that's because it's using for, alpha, for alphabet uh, value. So it assigns a numeric value to um, each letter, one through 26, I believe. Uh, just be careful with that one because uh, yeah, it doesn't always work like you think it's gonna work. So be careful with that one. Um, but it can do stuff like alphabetize for you uh, based on the first value of a string. Um, be careful using a backslash though, because it is an escape character and escape characters kind of control how things are printed on the screen. We won't talk a lot about escape characters, just avoid the backslash because it might do things that are not expected for you, <laughs> are sort of unexpected. Okay, concatenating characters. Okay, so there's several options here depending on how you want things combined. If you, uh, for C, C will, will actually also create a vector of strings for you. So this my string, this, and so this is a string dot. All of these things are separate elements in this vector. And uh, if, when you concatenate these, it's going to have this is a string, which is length five, because one, two, three, four, five. You've concatenated those things together. But it concatenates it just like it would concatenate uh, a numeric factor for you. They're all separate things. It's not like a sentence um, that you would know they're not all a combined string. Uh, if you want to do that, try to use paste. So paste is a special function that will create a single string out of separate, several separate strings and arguments. So if you give, you have to give the arguments separately. You can't just say paste uh, my string. Um, you have to give my string element one, my string element two, my string element three, my string element four, my string element five. And it pots out, this is a string, okay? And now this, the length of this would be one. Uh, because it's pasted all of those things together in uh, one one big string. You can assign the output of paste to its own variable. So here is a variable. Uh, paste zero just means I don't want any spaces here uh, in between any of these elements. You can see here that it puts a space in between each of these elements, including here, which doesn't make sense. Um, and then if this, it's just constructing a file name uh, and file location here for a specific set of results for you know, some figure that I uh, uh, created in my code. Okay, check your understanding. Assign the follow value to A. Y, all right, A is now Y. What class of object is A and how can you test to make sure? Is it a numeric? And do you test it by saying is dot numeric or is dot numeric, yeah, A? Is it a logical? Is it a character or is it a complex number? Go ahead and do it. And here's the answer. It's a character, right? Because we put it in those double quotes. And so it's a character, the character Y, okay? Is.character will return what? Is.character A will return what? It should return true. But what's our output if you tried is.numeric or is.logical? What would be the output? So go ahead and write that down. If you think you know, if you don't know, then write it down and ask it during class. Okay, so that's it. That's data class. I mean, there are a lot of different data types. We're going to talk a lot about different specialized classes for data, which are really important as well. But just try to remember, keep in mind that when you read health documentation, a lot of times it's going to tell you what type of uh, data it needs to have as arguments. Um, it's going to tell you often the type of data that's going to be an output. And if something's just not working, you know, just sanity check, like go and make sure that you're giving it the correct arguments in the correct way. Uh, and you're getting out the di output data that you think that you are because those things may not be totally aligned. Um, for next time, I have an assignment 1.6 that you should probably, you should definitely complete if you'd like credit for it. Uh, and then read Davies chapter two for vectors next time. And that is it for me. And I hope that you have a good day and I'll see you in class.